Arcade Perfect My Arse. Right, okay guys, welcome to another Arcade Perfect My Arse, and this week I'm going to take a look at Rygar. Um, Rygar is a video game created by Tecmo in 1986, and it was originally released for arcades in Japan as Warrior of Argos, or if you're in the UK, Warrior of Argos, possibly. Um, as you'll see, it's a side-scrolling platform game where the player assumes a role as a legendary warrior, battling through a hostile landscape. The main feature of gameplay is the use of a weapon called the Disc Armor, a shield with a long chain attached to it. Um, and some of the, the ports that we're going to take a look at that were only released in Japan, and these ports were called Argos Non Jujekin. Apologies to any uh, anyone that speaks a language, and I've just made a complete arsely saying that. Anyway, let's take a look at the arcade version. I've got to be honest, I mean, although I am completely familiar with the game, um, it's not a game I've really played at all. And if I'm being perfectly blunt, I don't think it looks that nice compared to games that were out at the same time. But let's give it a go anyway. The thing that strikes me right away with this game is the completely uninspiring, unimpressive main character that you can play and yeah you're playing this part of this big warmeister uh, god and he's a tiny little sprite now normally arcade games have big graphics I don't know this just looks very very small another thing that I find instantly annoying about this is uh, that really annoying sound effect when uh, when you use your ball and chain thing, and that would get in your nerves after about two seconds. Nope, centipede. So is that lava underneath or is it a large centipede? Hmm. I'm going to see the baddies himself. Or no. Very inspiring looking, you know, arcade games, they, they've got to jump out of you. You take something like Ghosts and Goblins, no matter whether you like the game or not, you cannot fault the visuals or the sound, it just grabs you. This one, to me, has none of them. Yeah, you've got what looks like little bulls, you've got little uh, rhinoceroses that run towards you, and you've got is that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, you've certainly got a muscled bloke wearing a pair of budgie smugglers holding a loft. I don't know what that is. A bulb or something? Oh, centipede. Too late. It reminds me of a cross between Greenberry, Kung Fu Master and Altered Beast. If the three of them had a child, this would be what... What a spout. <laughs> ah, balls. Anyway, that's arcade. Let's take a look at home version. Right, kicking things off, we've got the Commodore 64 one. Now, I think I played this in a live stream a wee while ago. What puzzles me is, why have you got a timer at the very top? What is that all about? Is that the time you've got to complete the level, possibly? Right, right away, hmm, uh, yeah, it's got the same... I was going to say dinky. Dinky to me would be a compliment. Dinky means quite cute, look really nice, but I wouldn't say they're dinky graphics. Minuscule, we'll go, we'll go with the word minuscule. Yeah, it's got the same minuscule visuals as the arcade. Um, it's tried to reproduce the, the music, which, to be perfectly honest with you, is not overly inspiring anyway. I mean, they've attempted to make the graphics look. Oh, is that game over? Bloody hell, that was quick. I thought that was going to be the start of the bloody Adams family there. Doodle doodle bum bum. 
Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get on. Uh, obviously, they've not gone for uh, any sort of high res mode that the C64 can do. I think Ocean perfected that with uh, games like Target Renegade, where they took a, a sprite, a blocky sprite, and then they got a black outline and drew around it, which kind of gave the give the impression of a really detailed looking sprite. Sadly, these guys haven't gone for that. I need to stop being so critical. I mean, from a from a from a port of Grizar, not Grizar, from a port of uh, whatever the game is, this is called, uh, Rygar, I was going to say Rastan, from a, for a port of Rygar, this is pretty much what you would expect. I mean, it looks alright, it certainly plays alright, feels very, very similar to the arcade. One thing that this does have over the arcade, which I like, is it's not got that really annoying uh, sound effect. And game over. Do do. Four point five billion years have passed since the Earth's creation. Many dominations have ruled in all their glory, but then, but time was their greatest enemy, and it def nah, I'm too slow. <laughs> I mean, all the graphics are present and correct. You know, they don't look as good as the arcade. Um, you know, is this a bad port? I don't think you could say it's a bad port at all. It's it's, it's pretty much what you'd expect. It certainly plays well. It, it plays nice and fast. What an arcade game should. Not that a smart ball name, I think. Right, anyway, yeah, that's the C64 one. Now, moving on to some Sega Master System goodness. Now, interestingly, as soon as you start the game, I mean, it's literally as soon as the ROM loads, it just throws you straight in there. Straight into the game. There's not even an option screen, you don't press a button, it's Switch on, boof, in you go. Hang on, player two? Oh, arse. Right, it appears that I have, I don't know how that's happened. It appears I've started a two player game, not to worry, it's going to be over pretty quick anyway. Now, the animation of the guy running, hmm, I think it's got, I'm counting two frames of animation. Whilst the graphics look alright, you'll see there, when these wee guys get dropped, there's a lot of glitching going on. I think that's just a, a shortfall of the system rather than this particular game. How did these guys get down there? I don't remember seeing them in the arcade one. Music, I don't think is faithful to the original. There's a lot of red going on in this game. Just have to bear with me while we die. Yeah, for presentation, this one would get a zero because there is no presentation. It's just boof, straight into the game. Again, it plays okay. I mean, it, it looks alright. Yeah, you can see there when <laughs> some of the baddies run towards me, they've got big hollow chests. And I don't mean the kind that you have golden. Oh, blocking the budgie smugglers doesn't appear to be there. So, it's not, this is not an accurate port. I will continue. This is not an accurate port of the arcade one. It's kind of done its own thing.
if I'm being honest, it's I'm not enjoying this at all. It's just, uh, and that's probably more to do with the actual arcade version as well. It's not a game I think really is any fun. Right, just wait for me to die. It shouldn't take long. Oh, there's even glitching going on there when there's not a lot happening on the screen. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, why have I got another life? Anyway, that's the Sega Master System. Right, back to 8-bit systems. This is the Amstrad. Well, technically the Master System is an 8-bit system. You know what I mean, an 8-bit computer. Right. Now it appears that uh, your, your bloke that you control uh, has decided that it's obviously a bit quite warm, so he's got his top off. Scrolling is not perfect, you can see that it's not pixel scrolling. This one also plays quite a bit slower. Graphics are nice, I have to say. The graphics are certainly better than they were in the C64. Music's, well I'm going to say the music's okay, the music is okay, it's not the greatest music in the world, but it is fairly authentic. Oh, I've just fallen into the lava. <laughs> now I know most of you are probably too young to remember this program, but there was a program called Monkey, and it was a, a Japanese program where this guy could literally leap across clouds. Now, if you've ever seen the film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, I think it's called, the guy could do the same thing. He could basically do these massive leaps, and it looks like this guy was an extra in said film. He can jump almost. Half the screen, look at that, yeehaw. You see they get a lot of pickups. I'm not quite sure what they actually do. Yeah, you get an absolute plethora of pickups. The little uh, what do you call them? The little uh, bulls or whatever they're called, rhinoceroses, don't look quite as imposing as the arcade when they're quite small looking, look more like uh, hamsters with horns. This bloke with uh, speedos on, though he's not. Repulse bonus. I don't know what that means, I don't know how you build that up. Repulse? Hmm. Now let's see how far we can actually get just with jumping. Mr. Flying Bull has just killed us. That's the thing about some video games, when you discover that you can actually, it's actually easier just to keep jumping. Like it is here, it kind of almost defeats the purpose of playing the game. You could technically play it properly and just kill things, or else you could take the easy option and just keep jumping. A bit like We Have Exploding Fists on the C64. Not that that's got anything in common with this game, but when people discovered you could defo defeat all enemies with a leg sweep, people did that. And it's game over. Anyway, that's Amstrad. Right. If there was going to be a, a perfect version, I would imagine this is going to be the one. This is the Sharp X68000. Now, apologies um, about the emulation. I think it's the emulator. You'll see ever so now, or now and again, everything kind of just jumps a wee bit, kind of jerks. I don't know what it is. It plays silky smooth, and then it will just kind of jerk a wee bit. Don't know why it does that. Yeah, as expected, this is pretty much uh, pretty much there, I think. 
Graphics look pretty damn the uh, loyal to the arcade one. Yeah, you don't really. There's just there's enemies coming at you constantly, and I don't know. It's just it's just relentless. And not in a kind of enjoyable type of way. I mean, I, I love bullet hell shooters, I love games where it's fast paced action, but I don't know, this game. I don't know, I just think that it lacks any real imagination. It's it's your typical. They were obviously jumping in the bandwagon with the, the run and gun, run and slash, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, games like Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts, um, you know, Grisor, whatever it was, they are so much better. Hey, there it is. Block with the uh, bright orange speedos is there. I have no idea what that's all about. The pulse bonus, eight thousand two hundred, no less. Oh, centipede. These baddies, they don't have any heads. Now, I'm really showing my age here. There used to be a program uh, back in the, in the 70s, I think it was, called Flash Gordon. And it was it was black and white. And it was made, I don't know, in the 30s or 40s. And it had these guys called the Claymen. And uh, it's just exactly what it sounds. These guys are made of clay. And they look not too dissimilar to these little dudes there. In this version, it's so authentic, it's even got the annoying little yeah when you use your uh, ball and chain thing. I don't know how to access my uh, other weapons, you can see it down the bottom. It's even laughing at us. Anyway, that's a Sharp X68000. Right, on to the Nintendo NES. Get that damn mouse pointer out the road. Now, for some odd reason, most NES arcade ports, they tend to kind of do their own thing. Rather than just kind of giving us a, an exact port, they obviously thought, wouldn't it be better if we gave them something different? Give them more uh, levels, etc. Now, that could be true, but... Maybe, maybe back then you did want something different, but as a, a purveyor of games in sort of 2021, I would rather have an arcade perfect version. <laughs> one life, bloody hell! Uh, yeah, right away, this one does. It's got different music. The level is different. Rather than uh, rather than having a uh, Rhinos, you've got what look like tortoises. Maybe because it's, maybe it's a maybe it's tipping its hat to a uh, Cooper from uh, the normal uh, Nintendo games. Who knows? You see there, you do occasionally get some glitching going on as well. So that was obviously just a, a feature of the uh, the NES hardware. There's a lot of red in this one, reds and purples. Is Budgie Boy there? Nope. It loses a point for that. Now, have I only counted two different types of baddies? You've got the centipede thing and you've got these little uh, tortoises. Oh, but how did they be clay guys? I, haven't, I can't actually remember if I've seen any of them. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of glitching going on there. Yeah, let's give another go. It's 
She's got marginally better uh, animation when he's running. I don't see any bit here where it shows you uh, special weapons. Maybe you don't have special weapons, which is unusual because usually NES ports, they'll take a game where you only have one weapon and they'll give you bonus weapons. Oh, a rope. Yeah, the music is thoroughly generic. And not even in a, a good generic way. Oh! There's an epiphany of me sitting up there, I don't know what that's going on. How do we get up? In the Grand Mountain lies... Bollocks, game over. Anyway, that was the NES, this is the Xerix Spectrum. 4.5 billion years have passed. Let's fight. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing, That's this is kind of what you'd expect. It's got tiny, oh there's a the clay men, at least they are present and correct, and you've got the tiny little, uh, tiny little, uh, what do you call it, rhino, rhinoceros uh, baddies. Glad to see uh, this game uses all the all the, the, the popular sound effects that most games, most of the early games on the Spectrum use, this uses generic farts and beeps and whatever. I mean, as, as far as ports of Rygar go then, you know, you can't really, you can't really complain too much. Mr. Speedo, no, he's not there, that's disappointing. Repulse bonus. 1200 points. Ooh, is that crash? Oh, that rank? Or is that rank zero? Hmm, oh, it's not crashed. Right, I think we'll have one more go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, you know, the graphics are... The graphics are, are what you would expect in the spectrum. They do... They do look, they do resemble the Spectrum, they use uh, the Spectrum, they do resemble the uh, the arcade, they use a sort of a high resolution, the only problem is you only get, what, two, three colours, something like that, but then most of the arcade ports in the Spectrum are like this. Quite sure what that star actually does. Oh, shoot the digestive biscuit. No, we'll not bother, we'll just keep running. Right, I think that's enough of that. That is the Spectrum one. Right, a few more to go. This is Atari Lynx. Now, there weren't many games in the Lynx, so interesting to see this. Now, apologies again in advance with the, the sound in this. This emulator is called Handy, I think it is is not the best. It's the sound is a bit uh, a bit pants. Oh kind of a bit sore in the ears as well. I'm sure in the links this would have been absolutely fine. Woof, there you go. So for a <laughs> considering this is a handheld, look at the size of the graphics, but then there again you need to remember the screen, I don't know what size of TV you're watching this on, you might be watching it on a 55 inch telly. This screen you're looking at would have been on a screen about what, two and a half inches by one and a half, something like that. 
I mean, it, it, color-wise, it looks pretty good. There's a digestive biscuit. Oh, there's the clay man again. Oh, watch out for the centipede. Take that. that the, the, the rhinoceroses don't seem to be moving this one, they just seem to kind of stand still. Well, they move very, very slow. Maybe it was just felt like on a small screen it wouldn't really work, I don't know. Well, this kind of does feel quite like the arcade one. I do quite like this one. Only really the game, but I think this version isn't bad. Mr. Speedo Bloke is there, present and correct. This person gets a bonus point for that. Yeah, the sound is a bit ugh, but I think that is the emulator rather than the actual game itself. bloody power-ups, but I don't really know what they do. There's a couple of them that I can tell what they do. Some of them sort of destroy everyone on the screen, but other ones I have no idea. I actually bought a Lynx, a um, Lynx machine. I bought it about a month ago. Sadly, uh, it had a couple of lines in the screen, so I sold it, so I owned it for literally a day. Again, it's got the kind of music, but the music is instantly forgettable. It doesn't really add anything to the game at all, if anything, it just makes it even more uh, annoying to play, I think. But at least it doesn't have the, the ah, when you throw your weapon thing. Yeah, hmm. Right, okay, listen, that is the Lynx. Yeah, bonus version, that was the last of the official versions. This version on the Amiga that you're about to see, um, the game was never officially released to the Amiga, but some clever dude, um, now, I've, I've, apologies, I've completely forgotten his name, um, he does watch my uh, channel sometimes, so uh, massive apologies for forgetting your name, but he, uh, programmed this version for the Commodore Amiga and I've been told uh, I've been told it's meant to be pretty damn good well listen to that sound that sounds exactly like the arcade yeah there you go that is as authentic as they come. First time I've actually played this uh, this version. So this is not going to be included in Arcade Perfect because when I do that I always like just to, uh, you know, when I give the scores I like to rate it on the original versions that, were, that came out back in the day. But it's always nice just to kind of show you because at the end of the day if you're going to want to play a version of this Chances are you might want to play a sort of a, a new version. Now you can actually, this actually utilises two fire buttons so you can have your fire and you can also have your uh, one for jump which does make it easier to play because all the all the home ports, well apart from the consoles, all the home conversions on the computers you had to push up the icon to jump, which I'm not keen on. It doesn't really make for uh, responsive jumping. <laughs> this one is pretty difficult, though, I have to say. Oh, 
bollocks. That's game over. And he's even mocking me with that laugh. Anyway, let's summarise. Right, okay, the C64, you know what? It, it, played, it played pretty much what you would expect. It was fast. The graphics were all right, quite blocky looking. The sound was okay. Master System was nay, a bit too red for my liking. A lot of glitching going on. Uh, considering it would cost about 30, 40 quid. Wasn't a massive fan. Amstrad 1 was just a wee bit slow. It probably had the best graphics of the home computer versions. Um, or at least, yeah, the home computer versions. Sharp X 68000. It, it is what you would expect. Probably arcade perfect there or thereabouts. The NES one, um, again, it's a port. It does its own thing. They, they've changed the graphics. There wasn't an awful lot going on there. Um, not a massive fan of that. The Spectrum one, again, like the C64, it's exactly what you would expect from a Spectrum uh, conversion. Monochrome graphics, quite small, uh, quite small graphics, um, but it played, it played pretty well. And the last one is the Lynx. Um, yeah, massive graphics, obviously designed to be like that because obviously uh, it was a small screen. Again, it played all right. Some of the baddies, the, the rhinoceroses didn't seem to move. Um, so, mm, right, if you really had to play them, on oh, sorry, the last version, obviously the Commodore Amiga, I thought was fantastic. If you were going to have to play them, oh, let me think. I would probably, in third place, in bronze medal position, now this is quite appropriate given we are in the Olympic year, in bronze position, I would probably edge the C64 one ahead of the uh, Spectrum and Amstrad one. Now, Amstrad did have the nicer graphics, but I think the C64 one played, it did feel more like the arcade one. So that would be third place bronze. Second place, and it's a close one. Second place, I would have to go for the... Mm, wait a minute, I was going to say the Amiga one, but I can't include that because that's that's a recent remake. Right, tell you what, let's roll it back. Amstrad would take bronze position, third place. Second position, by a whisker, would be the Commodore 64 version. Um, it just played that a wee bit quicker and in first place it would have to be the Sharp X68000. However, if I was to include the remake of the Amiga one, I would probably push the C64 down to bronze. I would bring in the Amiga in second place and still I think I would go for the Sharp X68000. However, do you really want to play this game? No, personally I thought it's, I thought it was rubbish. The arcade one, it's just dull. It's, you know what, it's a generic running, kill things type game. The baddies don't look interesting. They're quite small graphics. I just found it an utterly, utterly boring arcade game to play. There's not many arcade games that you play and go, I didn't like that. But I have to say, this is one of them. So I am not a fan of Rygar. Um, but if, you're going to, if you want to play Rygar and it's not going to be the arcade one, go for the Sharp X68000 or go for the Commodore Amiga one. So anyway guys, listen, if there's a game you'd like to see me feature in this Arcade Perfect My Arse feature, put your comments down below. And finally guys, thank you very, very much for watching.